We start off with the markets and what we are calling the longest yard for stocks. Now, we're not talking about the Burt Reynolds Classic. Oh, we're talking. No, we're not. We're not. Great sorry, flick. we're not. No. We are talking about 2800 on the S&P 500. Despite notching gains for seven of the last eight sessions, it just can't break through. We've been here before. In fact, the last three times we've been here, the market has sold off. You know what that's called? A fake out. So as we make another run for 2800, will this be a breakout or a fake out, Pete? Well, I know there's some headline risk going on right now, but I actually would stick with. And you could have been in that movie, by the way, Longest Show. Oh, sure. Uh, football Bill movie. Goldberg yeah, was in yeah, part two of that whole thing when it came out, a good friend of mine. All no, right. but I'm into breakout. Sorry. And the reason I say that is when I look at what's been going on in the market of late, we've seen a nice movement around the market. It's not just tech. I realize there are specific names that really have pushed the S&P up higher. But the broadness of the different, tech, the different sectors, I think, really makes this a much more interesting market right now. We're getting energy participating. We've got stronger consumers. We've got a lot of different areas, and we've got earnings kicking off on Friday. Yeah, we saw today, I mean, the small caps underperformed tremendously, right at the so top again, tech. right? True. About tech time. underperformed, maybe it was some Google. True. And then not only that, look at the bond market and look at junk yields. They are not back at lows like you would think they would be at the highs. So, I mean, to me, it's just, there's a lot of caution here. I don't think you have to buy this market at 2,800. You can wait till it, it proves itself and so breaks out. It's, it's a, a uh, Yanni. Fake out. <laughs> That was like three, that was like what two was months it? ago, dude. Oh, That's oh, so old. It's a fake out. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Yeah, I just had this. So, yeah. so you know, that 2,800 is a kind of a big number, and then the next number is kind of 2,900, which is where we topped out in late January. So, you know, if you're a trader and you want to play for that breakout, you're really going to see the same thing. <laughs> we're going to be talking about this. If you get up 3%, we're going to be talking about it in a few weeks or a month or two or whatever, or we're going to break out to new highs, that sort of thing. I mean, listen. The, the rally off the lows in March is pretty impressive when you think about it. it's a series of higher lows and higher highs, and now we're back up at this resistance level. I'll just add this, and when we have technicians come on and they say, I don't care about the news that you're talking about, the fundamentals, and whatever, but we're going into a very important newsy period, which is earnings. So this is why you could see this stalling at 2800 but I don't think it, you know, listen, I just don't think we're making a new so high. A, I just so that's a make out. That, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We're, well, we're, we're, oh, higher, we're playing a game. Higher I lows. Yeah, exactly. no, I I lows right here away. as we bump up against yeah. the 2800 Let me, because right? Dan so, took forever. He waffle on getting that fake out out there. Let me start right out of the way. I think actually take out. Um, I no, think, or break out. Or whatever. Break out. Break break out. out. Break break out. Down. You <laughs> busted. This is a song from my <laughs> Ghostbusters. All right. This break is not out. that hard, guys. Break out. <laughs> and here's why. First of all, those other three periods where we ran into resistance at 2800 on the on the S&P, I think positioning was very different. Frankly, if you look at CFTC data, actually the, the, the spec long positions in S&P futures going into this whatever we're going to call this, I'm calling it breakout, not takeout, um, <laughs> is, is actually significantly lower. In other words, there's been long liquidation. So what does this mean? I think uh, as you look at where uh, the city surprise index came in a couple days ago, so also we we're at kind of extreme negativity. I think the market is actually in a different place going into this earnings season than we were going into the last one. Now, I realize, you know, Trump's heading off to NATO meetings, then off to see Putin, and he's going to talk tough, and headlines could be what they are. I think tactically that would be not out of character right now for this president to go in there and make some some bold statements in, in the next couple of days. But I do think that the market's positioning is what this is about. I'm going breakout. Is it concerning that earnings estimates have been revised gradually higher as we go into this earnings season? As, as somebody who sees this as a potential right. breakout, it's a different setup, I think, than it's going different into setup, but I think the first Pepsi, quarter. Pepsi perform, per, the performance today, if uh -huh. that at all is a reflection of what we're going into, I think the breakout is really. It's, it's a bellwether. I know. Well, it's I know it's it, it, well, but they are there. This is a global company. Uh -huh. They've got different lines. Obviously, they've got soda pop. They've got the. The, the snack energy drinks, they got really the snack business, fire. they've but got all that. This was also a stock that was down 8% on the year. No doubt. Uh, it was down, you know, at some point. It was down, yeah, it was down 20%. Well, are the expectations lower high right now for financials, for instance? Uh, yeah, Probably I, low. I, I don't think it would be I, I, I agree technology, with that. though, the biggest component of the market. And I think technology will still outperform and still even, beat the numbers even at they this are point high. in time. Yes. Hmm. What do you think? I still think that I'm still more in the we're in range bound, right? The market is still trying to wrestle with this. Is trade war good or bad? If an extended trade war goes on, it's going to be bad. But what if it works? What if we actually get some free trade or we get some more products into China? Then that's going to be extraordinary for earnings. And I think that's the mark what the market's struggling with. So, again, I go back to I don't think you have to rush into this market. You can wait because if it does break out and we have great earnings and we have a great economy and the trade war subsides, 
you've got a lot more upside. Okay, whether you say breakout or fake out on the overall markets, there are individual names that we want to talk about that have seen some pretty big moves since uh, the S&P 500 bottomed at okay. 2,700 on June 28th. Okay, so the first name here, Wells Fargo. It's up about 6% since then. BK, same rules apply. Breakout or fake out? Take out. Oh, no, wrong, wrong one. Sorry. Tim did that. That's what I do. <laughs> no, it's a fake out. It's a, it's a fake out. I, the, what concerns me about the financials, one, we have that flattening yield curve. Yes, I know they can outperform on that. But again, the, the junkier part of the bond market is concerning me about the market in general. And obviously, financials are exposed to that. Wells Fargo, in and of itself, is has that some the junkier part of the, of the financial market right there? I mean, the Wells, Wells Fargo? Fargo? Yeah. No, not necessarily, but it, it, it can come, it starts there and it can move in. So I'm a little concerned about that. We've already had a move. So to me, it's a fake out. It's interesting to me because if you think about the second quarter earnings, the banks had the best earnings of, of any sector. I mean, they crushed it. And then, you know, guys like you might say, well, look at what they did. They, they languished all quarter, really on the back of the yield curve. I, I just think that the fundamental around the banks going into this earnings season, especially we're getting data now on loan growth in the second quarter. And it's actually very impressive year over year, up about five and a half percent. I think this is the time people are paying attention to fundamentals in banks. All right, next stock here, Freeport McMoran. That stock is up 7% in just the last eight sessions. Tim. Yeah, I'm going to go break out on this, and here's why. You know, ultimately, during the last 15 sessions, we actually saw copper go from 330 down to 280, which, by the way, was last year's resistance, and so therefore it became support. I actually think Dr. Copper is going to start to make another move again, but FCX, which has been so closely correlated to a copper move, really outperformed during a very negative copper spot market. I think this is not the company it used to be. By the way, to be clear, I don't love Freeport. But I do think it's going to outperform here. And I think, look at the PPI last night in China. That's very important for your read on commodities. It was hot, and that's good for commodities. Does copper continue to go higher? Because if it does, I think Freeport's absolutely. Yes. Yes. Sure. I could make no, a pretty good break to the my upside. My point is I think copper's found resistance. Right. PPI would give me confidence. And Freeport outperformed in a down copper market. And I think it does okay in, a, in an up one for sure. All right. Next stock, Nike. It's up about 9%. Pete. You know, this is a stock. First of all, I think it's breaking out. But I think it's a fake out. And here's why. It's made, a, mean? Mean? it's made a it's made a it's made a huge hold on, hold on. Hold on. take out. He's so, so my opinion is this is going to be a fake out, but it is breaking out. I mean, you look at the chart. This is breaking. Well, that answer is a fake but out. It's a, it's a fake so out. I'm saying it's a fake okay. out, and here's why. I sold the stock yesterday. I like what what Nike's doing right now, but I look at the valuation levels, and we all look at all these various metrics, and they're growing. The growth, obviously, international is great. North America a little bit slower, obviously, and that's been the biggest concern. But it's made up that gap. And because of that, trading up here at 78.7, 78, 79, somewhere in that range, you're talking about 27, 28 times. This is a 22, 24 times type stock. I think because of that, it's a fake out. It's going to pull back. I think you'll have a better opportunity closer to seven. Yeah, I think it's a breakout, and I think again those numbers we just got. It's a real breakout, got, not a, it's a real breakout, breakout not the fake out yeah. that he gave. It's to a the fake producer. out. Someone breakout. thought he was saying breakout. They faked. He faked him out. It's a breakout again. I, I think that level we rallied to is actually the flagpole chart, and uh, that's interesting to me. Last stock here, Biogen. It's up 20 percent, almost 20 percent, in a little more than a week. Dan. Yeah, so this thing went from 300 to 370 on a piece of news about some data that an analyst today was calling ambiguous and downgraded it. Um, so you have this 20% news on a piece of uh, uh, data that people can't exactly quantify right now. So I would say it's a bit of a fake out here. Surprise. Um, well, I, I'm just saying, I mean, the thing was wallowing I agree with uh, for a while until you got that yeah. news. So, I, you know. It's listen, a real fake out? I think it's a full fake out. Yeah, I mean, listen. This is phase two, by the worry. way. It's not phase three. This so, was phase two in terms of what they were sure. doing. And right. some of the numbers were manipulated around in a different way of actually going and, and approaching the numbers. <laughs> makes this whole thing feel like a fake out and it's a huge move in the stock I, I tell you what though I mean it, it, that's that's a totally fair something. statement based upon what Biogen has done over the last you know five years effectively it's been a sideways yeah. play and I think you guys are right to, to be there except for I think this Alzheimer's news while it's not level three it's not phase three I think there's you get data in a year it forces people to make a call on the stock right here and now and I actually the think July, they, they, they actually have to be in the stock and I think it's not like that stock was that it was not that much of an outsized move considering how little the stock has done over the last five years.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.